Coach, we'll just start. Just uh, general thoughts on, on your team and, and everything heading into this spring 2021 season. Well, you know, the fall, man, it just was hard to get excited because I just didn't want to let myself go there because ultimately I didn't have a lot of confidence that it get accomplished. And so now we're here and I'm uh, super excited and it feels like we're going to get this done. And um, so I got that, that preseason vibe going on. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. And also, I just want to put this on video because I want to remind myself maybe in two or three months here is we're playing. I don't care if we got literally uh, any players and at least one coach we're playing. We're not going to work this hard and not play. Like, it's not about winning and losing. It's about playing. And so uh, I think it also is going to take a commitment because there are going to be disadvantages and there's going to be easy way outs because that's just how society likes to do it. But, uh, you know, the Red Hawks are going to anywhere, anytime, any place. Like, the goal here is to play. And so um, you can hold me accountable when I start complaining and talking about all my, all our problems. So uh, you got, you media guys are good at that. So just remind me of that someday. Thank you, coach. Again, uh, if you have a question, uh, there's some already there, just write me in the chat that you have a question and I'll call on people in order. So Craig Haley, uh, you're up first. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for taking the time, coach. Coach, I mean, what you're saying kind of reflects on the uncertainty that's been out there and just what gives you more of a comfortable feeling now than, than before? Well, we, we've worked through a lot of the issues, and so there's a lot more confidence. But ultimately, my players feel better. Uh, they, they are not as concerned, and so they have a lot more peace about the information and, and that we're all going to be safe. And so at the end of the day, uh, you know, that's all I need. Uh, all I, you know, now we just got to solve each and every unique problem that pops up. Sure. Do you find, is this a season maybe where you, you kind of focus within and not pay attention as to much to, to the other teams, what they're doing, because you have to control your situation a little more? Yeah. I mean, I think every coach talks about, you know, we need to worry about ourselves and not our opponent. Um, but that's true. Like you literally don't know, and you certainly should not be making long range plans. You should be focusing on the now and uh, just putting the best product we're capable of putting out there and, and the, the information that we have uh, at the time doing the best that we can. And then we'll, we'll just figure it out. But certainly, uh, you know, this, this opponent scouting, I mean, their quarterback may not even be at the game to get catch COVID that, I mean, there's just, there's sure all these things. And so I think it's just going to reinforce what we've always believed is focus on the things you can control, or I don't even like saying that it's focus on the things you do have influence on. Sure. I know there's been a lot of concern nationally that 2000, two, uh, 2021 is going to bring on too many games for a team and, and just the taxing that it takes on a body. Can you talk about that? I mean, th there is the potential of, 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 you know, many games in this calendar year. Well, I'm confused because it, 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 it's like all these coaches got these exercise physiology degrees. <laughs> so, you know, we, I, I don't know what that means. And coaches shouldn't be going, it's too hard or it's no problem. Like, that's not our – That's we don't have the science backgrounds. But in my opinion, would you rather practice or play? Like, we have five weeks of contact full-blown spring ball or would you rather go play seven games like I mean it's not 99 percent of my team would rather play and so ultimately <clears throat> um you know I feel good about the decision and so everybody that's speaking on it and if they don't have an exercise physiology background they need to stop talking okay thank you coach uh, thanks, Craig. We'll go to uh, Tom Davis next. If anybody else has questions, just uh, put in the chat and I'll call on you. We have plenty of time. Tom, I think your mute's still on. Unmute. There you go. Well, my first mistake of 2021. And uh, coach, I'm going to take a, a bigger picture approach to this as well. Um, the first few years, 
uh, of, of managing this program. You are trying to build it to a certain point. Um, and the last couple of years, you've gotten it to a point and now you're trying to take it to another point. So my question is, was it more difficult or what was the difference between the first few years you're building it and trying to establish a culture and the last couple of years where you've now had success and you're trying to take that success to another level? Well, that's a great question. Um, and so my answer is when I first got here, it wasn't hard to improve there were so many things and so many opportunities to get things better, but it, it, you, you just had to keep improving it. Now, as we look for areas of growth and improvement, they're a little harder to find and a little harder to change. You know, every time we've gotten outside the OVC, you know, I feel like our O-lines and D-lines have struggled and, and vice versa. There's a lot of little things. And that's one thing that I'm appreciative of this COVID time is I got a chance to hit the pause button and I asked myself, if I just now took this program over, I just got the job, how would I go about uh, managing this and making the decisions from the recruiting model to the daily day or daily operations? And um, because I, I don't have the same job I had. And right. so we can't do the same things. And so um, we have made some adjustments and some things that I feel really good about. Um, but we'll see. Uh, but those those opportunities for growth are, are hard. And, and certainly uh, you have to be on the watch out for complacency. You know, uh, we're sitting around feeling good about ourselves. And, and uh, that's not where you want to be in Division One football. Um, from a defensive front standpoint, your front seven, obviously, you graduated some guys that are going to go down as the greatest players in the history of SEMO football. Um, What's your defensive front, the, the front seven, the ability to get pressure, the ability to tackle? What's that going to look like this year? Well, we got a, we got a one-game sample, and uh, they had over 200 yards rushing. Now, certainly – That answers my question. <laughs> certainly, uh, you know, it wasn't like we, we gave up that to – Cape junior high. I mean, it was a right. top 25 team and, and certainly have a lot of respect for their program. Um, point totals down, obviously. And we got into that game and I, I think you were there or you at least watched right. it, you know, it was the fourth quarter, right? It was the, right. we were doing okay until the end. And so I think at the end of the day, we still do have good enough players. They don't have the experience, but ultimately we got to make sure that we're in the shape to be able to take that many snaps and still play good defense at the end. Okay. Um, your offensive line the last uh, week, week and a half, uh, how's it coming along? Because obviously a lot hinges on the play of the offensive line. Yeah, you know, it's tough to judge uh, physically because we're out there running around in our underwear still, you know, yeah. we don't have pads on yet. But uh, one of the things that was important that Coach O, uh, my offensive line coach, who's, who's awesome, we've talked about is, is they need belief. Um, you know, they were the subject to my wrath and my strong opinions uh, for a while here now. And so we got to make sure that uh, they are better, they can do it, and we got to help build that belief and that confidence that they can be the unit that takes us over the edge offensively. Um, Andrew Bunch appeared in the one game that I watched him to be a different type of quarterback than Daniel Santa Catarina. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of different ways you can have success in football as a quarterback. Uh, what is he going to do this year to be effective in the OVC? Uh, well, um, I'd say number one is he's got to manage the game better, you know, and, and I love Bunch. When I grow up, I want to be like Bunch. He's more mature than I am. So <laughs> but we can't turn it over two times in the red zone, come away with zero points and think we're going to uh, accomplish anything worth uh, a ring, certainly. And so um, that's I don't care what anybody says. That's first and foremost, like we got to be able to manage the game and not turn things over. Um, if we're concerned about our passing numbers and all those type of things, that's not a reflection of Bunch. That's a reflection of a lot of other um, 
measures that uh, you can get into, but I certainly still feel like we're going to be balanced. We should throw it more. I mean, we should have more passing yards and rushing yards. Uh, we got those weapons. I think uh, our O-line is coming together as they get confidence. We're going to be able to drop back more. Um, so I certainly uh, think he can be uh, one of the best in our conference. But, um, you know, we are in a show me state, so he's going to have to show us all that he can and, and live up to that. And uh, I know he's up for the challenge. All right. That works for me. Thanks, Tom. Your hair, your hair is looking sweet, by the way. It is what I've got left. So you've yeah, got this, this full head of hair and the beard and everything. Yeah, beard game's on point. It is. <laughs> we got about eight or nine uh, minutes with Coach. So if you have a question, just let me know in the chat and uh, we'll call. I, on plenty I've, got more, I've got more questions. I just didn't want to hog them. Well, let me ask one, Tom, and then I'll come back to okay. you. Uh, okay. Coach, you referenced this, or you referenced this just a bit ago. You played the one game against SIU. How important was it to play a game and just get out there as opposed to if you hadn't played a game starting in February? I mean, it was everything. Like, that's why I, you know, I basically ramrodded that. Like, I really wanted that because I think our team needed it. Now, why is because there's only way to get one way to get better, and that's to play. You don't learn by watching film. You don't learn by meetings, even though those are important. You actually learn and get better by doing. And so we needed to play. The other aspect of that is we've been away so long that the connections in our team are terrible. Like it was like, hey, who are you? I mean, it was we've been away and isolated and all that. So we got to come together. We've had some adversity. We went through some things. We got to do some hard things together. And so I think it, it also helped us from a team building uh, standpoint. One follow up to that then in the past 10 months, however long it's been, how much is, is it mental versus physical for your players that they have to overcome when they get back out there in, in February? Uh, say that one more time. How much of it is mental, like the mental preparation they need to do to, to get over what's happened the last 10 months versus the physical stuff they have to get over and just get back in shape? I, I don't think much mental. You know, there's going to be a mental thing where there may not be crowds and there may be some things like that. But my team is as as hungry as they've ever been like they have missed football they have been home we went home before i mean thanksgiving and we just got them back in january so they are like hey give me some of that they they want to be coached and so i don't think mental but i am certainly concerned physically and more so you know we've lost all this training time like basketball you get better by shooting you know we get better in the weight room and and this be able to sustain the, the not get injuries and sustain a whole long uh, season. And so I'm concerned about that. We've had to really watch once they got back that we don't overdo it and, and you get all these injuries. And so, uh, you know, we're certainly on that, that, you know, I read the book, the, the rabbit and the, the turtle, you know, uh, slow and steady always wins. And so that's not my nature. Like my nature is to, kick a door down but I have to I have to catch myself like we don't play till February 21st like you know we can't lose in January because we go out there and get people hurt uh, and so slow and steady is is that in the in the the, the physical uh, to just make sure that we're ready for those seven games uh, Van Stokes uh, you're up next coach Van Stokes from uh, the Governor Sports Network with uh, your friendly rivals Austin P. Uh, and I like you signed brick by brick. Um, Coach, talk about the change in culture that has come to your program in the past several years. You've got some perspective now, and you put this program on a very, very nice, uh, very nice place. But talk about the way your culture has changed in the past several years. Well, you hit it on the head. You know, I think it's our edge. I think it was something I had to learn. I had, I've been at programs where you just, you had better players and you just got them good at football and we went and won. Um, but it's kind of like the weight room. A culture can give a football team an edge. Uh, you know, we're, we're like everybody else. It's not like you look at our roster and go, oh my gosh, Simo's coming to town. But what has happened when you create a great culture that creates great alignment, it, it, it wins. Like in, in the game of football, that can win. 
And it's the biggest thing I'm the proudest of. When I got here, people, my players didn't even wear SEMO football gear. I go to class, I class checked, I go, hey, you don't even have SEMO. No, no, coach, we, I'm embarrassed to tell people around here I play SEMO for SEMO. I mean, it broke my heart. And now, you know, uh, probably got the other problem, but uh, there's just a proud, when you talk SEMO football, there's pride now, like a lot of pride with it. And that's my main job. Can I get enough people to care about SEMO football? Because if I can, all of the other problems from stadium to scholarships to budgets to players to recruiting, everything else falls in line if I could get enough people to care about our program. And um, I, I could talk about culture for 27 years, uh, but um, it, at the end of the day, I am proud of, of what we've done. But the hard part about this job is it, it ended last year. I got to rebuild it from scratch this year. We have 30 newcomers. All those players have been listening to me. They're gone. And so we got to make sure we double down and recommit to that, uh, you know, each and every day. Thank you. Todd Richards. Yes. Uh, hey, Coach Duke. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I, I was really thinking about that. And, um, when you mentioned about the culture, uh, because I, when I watched the, the SIU game, I, I really thought there was obviously a little bit of rough sides. Teams have been a little bit rusty and everything, but I thought the level of play and talent, the competitiveness was, was pretty strong. Um, and I know you ever, obviously you're a huge competitor, want to come away with the win, but I would think you, you know, it seems like you can really take some positives from some of that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about expectations. Um, we had nine practices. I mean, before we played SIU in 19, we had 45 plus a spring ball. Like it, it, to be able to, to not look like a joke out there was actually um, pretty amazing because we, we obviously uh, got a lot of our players hit COVID right as school started and we were in lockdown forever and we weren't able to get a lot of practices in. And so, yeah, I, I, I like what I saw every, we, we had problems, but all of those problems I feel like uh, can be improved and, and fixed. There wasn't anything that I didn't feel like we, we had an opportunity to get better at. One of the things you mentioned going into that game, you said it's going to come down to the wire you thought and it did. Um, now looking ahead to the OVC season, it's going to be such a, a different type of season. How do you see the this playing out a little bit? How competitive do you see it being this year? I mean, traditionally, it's always been, uh, you know, I haven't been here very long, but uh, the six seasons I've been in, you know, the race has gone down the wire to, towards the end of the season, but and games always go down. I don't know how many fourth quarter games we're in. We won a conference championship. And we had four fourth quarter comebacks. We could have lost any of those games. Um, and so uh, that's why the margins are thin and we got to attack all the little little details and any, any and everywhere that we feel like we could create an edge to be able to win in those moments. All right. Thank you. We're going to go one more question for Coach Took and then I bring our student athlete on. So Mike Paris, uh, close up the questions for Coach Took. Coach Mike Paris, Jackson State. Um, you mentioned something earlier, worried about physical, you know, getting physical and that sort of thing and the health of your guys. On that topic, assuming everything goes as according to plan, come back and play in the fall, does that concern you also looking ahead to the fall about their, their health and how they'll respond and bounce back? No, I feel good. I think we're going to do a really good job of getting their bodies ready for February. And then once we get done, you know, I feel good about uh, getting their strength and conditioning in May, June, and July to be able to, to handle the season. Um, you know, I think if you do have a problem, it's not the schedule, it's how you've handled your team. Um, but uh, my job is to make sure and, and be aware of things. And I got to see a problem before it's a problem. And so I'm watching it, but I certainly have good confidence I'm confident in, in the plan moving forward and playing hopefully more than uh, 18 games this year. Coach, uh, you thank you for your time this morning uh, and best of luck this year.